Do you know that some believers think that the day they dance well, that's when they have worshipped God. Or the day they roll on the floor, that's when they have pleased God. Or the day they put their head on the ground, it's hey, and they assume it already. They think that when they do these things, these external demonstrations, they have worshipped God. But you need to read the Bible to know what it means to worship God. If you don't take care, in ignorance, you will be wasting detergent, thinking that you are pleasing God. You will be dirtying yourself, thinking you are pleasing God. Meanwhile, God has no interest in what you are doing. Jesus said the time is coming and now is true believers, they will worship the Father what? In spirit and in truth. Then he said the Father seeketh such. So the opposite of seek is not being interested. You understand? The Father is interested in people like that. And then if you are not worshiping in spirit, then he is not interested. So you think that doing acrobatics and rolling in church is worship. God is saying you the way your heart is far from me, this thing that you are doing, I'm not interested in it. Because you don't understand Christian worship. Christian worship is in spirit and in truth. Your heart involvement. And then according to the principles of God, the word of God. So you cannot just roll on the floor. You cannot just lie down and think that you are pleasing God. God is not interested in that. In fact, total submission, yielding your whole life to God is worship. It is more than singing to God and lifting up your hand and crying. When God says, let's say, submit to one another. You have died a hand time 24-7 and you are crying. You think God is pleased. God is not interested in that crying and lying on the ground. Meanwhile, you don't know how to talk to people who are below you nicely. You are not, A worshiper is not just in the way you sing to God. It is how you live your life. Your life must be in total unison with the word of God. Total conformity to the word of God. Total submission to the word. That's worship. So when somebody has insulted you and you can beat the person, but because of the word of God, which says don't pay evil for evil, and you go, that is worship. You understand? When you meet somebody who is in need and you help them, that is worship. You understand? As a wife, when you submit to your husband, that is what? Worship. If you say you are singing to God, you are lying down, rolling on the floor, but you are cantankerous in the house, you are arguing every day, I will slap you, you think you are my husband, and so what? You are not a worshiper. I will slap you, and you go and take a knife. I will kill you today. I will kill you today. You are not a worshiper. That is not how to worship the Lord. Amen. Have you seen it? So, that is why knowledge is important. Knowledge is very, very key in Christianity. I don't know why many churches have taken out teaching services. You see counseling, prophetic hour, one-on-one -on -one with the prophet, encounter with um, the anointing, counseling session, and they've taken out teaching service. They say teaching is boring. That is why the Christians don't grow, they are not transformed into the nature of Christ, and they are just the way they are. Nothing different about them. It is the same. If you too, you come to church and teaching is boring to you. I wish we are doing prayers and apostles will pray for me. Ah, what is this one? We want power. Listen, this is where the virtue is. This is where the power is. This is what will make you what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, if you learn the word of God well, that's where true deliverance is. That's where true healing is. That's where true miracles are. If you have learned it, you will be a fisher instead of one that is being given fish. You will be able to help others. You will be able to catch fish and help others, give to others. But then if all you do is to receive, you are doing hand to mouth. That is not the Christianity God brought us to. God changed the Old Testament because of that reason. 
In the Old Testament, they needed a high priest to be between God and men. In the New Testament, God has squashed it. He says, no. Everybody will have access to me. Everybody will be able to relate with me. Everybody will be able to come to me. That's why it says, let us therefore come with boldness unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He said we should come boldly. But until now, because you lack knowledge, how to approach God, how to pray, how to relate to God, how to believe in God, you are not seeing the hand of God. It's unfortunate. So, these are just the foundation. We are laying the foundation on how to walk with God, how to live the Christian life, and how to walk worthy of the Lord, so that God to you will also say, this is my son, this is my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah.